Jesus. His name be Jesus. Jesus. My Lord. Hallelujah. His name. Name is Jesus. His name. His name is Jesus. His name. Name is Jesus. My Lord. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus, my Lord. Amen, amen. Blessings and glory, wisdom, and living. Ah, no, Power be to forever and ever. Amen. 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 and glory. Jesus. Wisdom. Power and love, be to our Going down of the same, 
gift of salvation. Your name, O Lord, to be praised. Hallelujah. There was no God from before you. There shall not be any after you. The creation of days, a bride and morning star, rose of Sharon, lily of the valley, soon coming king. He that was dead and behold is alive forevermore. Alive to save. Alive to heal, alive to deliver. Oh, Hallelujah to the Holy Spirit. Blessed, 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 blessed be the name of Jesus. Loro Boshida Bakuri Maseke Teire Buli Rabanduske Shede Buska Puria. Hallelujah. You are worthy, worthy, worthy is the land of us. Pray the Lord your faithfulness towards us. Oh, Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Your name will be glorified. This Bible study tonight. Your name will be magnified. Let your name be exalted, O God. Hallelujah. You are worthy. Worthy, worthy is the land that was slain. Oh, from the foundation of the world. Glory. Hallelujah. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. be your name. Oh Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Oh, oh Lord, God. Bless be be your Blessed Blessed be your name. Blessed Blessed be your name. Oh, oh Lord. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. What's your name? We thank you for bringing us to get together this evening. To study your word, Mary chose a better path for staying to listen to you. Oh Lord, the same vein, vein we have chosen a better path, even as we gather under your feet this evening to study your word. We ask for the leading of the Holy Spirit. Father Lord, we ask that you open our ears to understand, to hear our hearts to understand. Oh Lord, and our hearts to obey your word. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, mighty and ever living God. For everyone that shall contribute today, I pray, Lord, that everyone shall contribute under the leading of the Holy Spirit, that no one will speak of the flesh. Let everyone that listens to this broadcast, oh God, draw closer to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Amen. Lord, God. For a Hallelujah. Because we pray and believe, and everyone shall say, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Good evening, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank you for finding time to join us in today's Bible study. We are continuing with our study on trials and temptations, useful tools to believers' growth. I hope we have all learned a lot from this teaching. We started 12 weeks ago. This is our 12th week. And uh, uh, we we'll just, just want to give you a little recap of what we did last time and uh, we will continue from there. Amen. Amen. We, 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 we studied and we said that as good as miracles are, it's not miracle that will sustain our lives. It is the word of God. Amen. Not all those that receive healing from Jesus were present at the upper room that received the Holy Spirit. The apostles and, and other people, a total of 120 people received the Holy Spirit. Where were the 5,000, 4,000 people that ate bread with him? So let us not seek after signs and wonders. Let us seek after the word of God. Miracles are good, but those ones will not sustain 
our faith in totality. It is the word of God. So we encourage ourselves to know, to study more of the word of God, to know it. And we studied and said there is no temptation that will come our way that is too great for us to handle. Therefore, whatever comes our way, we should handle it in line with the Holy Spirit. A sister shared with us the other time and said every morning she prays, asking for the discernment of the Holy Spirit in all she does. Help me, Holy Spirit, to discern what you want me to do, what the decision you want me to take. I'm listening to a broadcast this afternoon, and the brother said there are times and conditions for meeting God's approval. And today, many Christians, rather than following God's times and conditions, they just want it to be their own way. I pray that God will help us. Amen. Murmuring is a thing, particularly when it is against God. And we, we, we often murmur when we are faced with temptation. Why me, God? Why me? Is it my sin that is responsible for it? If you have committed sin, please confess. If you have not committed sin, the Bible says rejoice and be glad when you are tempted. And we studied and said, forgive God, forgive yourself, and forgive those that have offended you. Memory is not good. Memory was what led the children of Israel, made many of the children of Israel not to enter the promised land. They murmured against God and against Moses. So don't only murmur against, don't murmur against God, and don't murmur against your leaders. If your leaders, your pastors are not doing the right thing, have opportunity to correct them, do correct them in love, pray for them. Pastors are human beings also. Pray for them, encourage them, don't make leadership difficult for them. Don't murmur against God. Amen. We're told to depend <clears throat> on God during trials and develop deeper relationship with him. During trials, depend on God. Lord, help me. I listened to another brief broadcast this morning or yesterday. He said, always remember the Lord's prayer that said, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. Let it be a prayer point. Somebody is standing before you as he's talking. Lord, help me not to react in a way that will offend you, lead us not into temptation. The negotiating a business, Lord, lead us not, lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from all evil. Amen. Somebody is saying something that is uh, that can trigger you. Pray silently, Lord, lead me not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. You can be called at any time. As a believer, you have been called, except that you do not know the scope of your calling. What I'm talking about is that every believer is called. Some are apostles, some are pastors, some are prophets, some are evangelists. We have all been called. And the more you use your gift, the more your gifts, the more they will expand. So do not allow failure at one point in your life, make you walk away from God. Don't be discouraged. If you fall, rise. Judas fell. He went to kill himself. Peter fell and repented and God restored him. Amen. So do not allow your failure in one uh, trial or temptation make you abandon God. Sometimes some people feel so guilty that they just say, they walk away from the church. Oh, brethren will be talking about me. Please let, them, let brethren talk about you. It's better for brethren to talk about you, learn from your mistakes, than the devil capture you completely. If Adam had, when God called Adam, if Adam had said, here I am, Father, I have sinned. I have eaten the fruit you asked me not to eat. I am very sorry. Forgive me. 
we will not be where we are now. God would have forgiven him. But rather than confessing, he started to blame the other person. And I keep saying that if you keep blaming somebody for a fault you contributed to, you will never get out of the problem. Oh, it's because I was born into a poor family. Oh, if I have somebody, if I have somebody to help me, I will not be this. Oh, people are praying for destiny helpers. Forgetting that they too can be helpers to another person. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. The lives of the apostles change when they receive the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit will guide us in all that we do. God promised believers baptism of the Holy Spirit uh, with uh, fire. But today, a lot of people are not prepared to go to that extent. Amen. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. So those are a few of the things that I jotted down we discussed last week. Uh, if you remember any, please contribute. I will at this point hand over to our big brother, Pastor John, at the moment to continue from where we stopped and take us through the studies tonight. God bless you, sir. Thank you so much, Pastor Innocent. God bless you. And Sir Catherine, God bless you too. Yeah, I remember we... I raised the issue of baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire last time. I said, yes, John, the forerunner of Jesus, said that to the people, that, that he who comes after me will baptize with the Holy Ghost and with fire. He said that fire is fire of purification. Because is God is God promising His own children, not enemies now, His own children, Holy Ghost baptism with fire. The fire is for purification. The fire is for cleansing. But today, today, that fire has been taken as an instrument to punish our enemies. I don't know how that just came up. The only remembrance of fire is when Elijah called down fire on the enemies of God in the Old Testament. And uh, when disciples of Jesus tried to remember that incident and called down fire on people who were talking about the gospel but were not in their immediate congregation, Jesus rebuked them. Jesus rebuked them and said, oh, you do not know the spirit you have. So that's the, re that's the only reference I can recollect that was made about Elijah calling down fire. And Jesus rebuked them because in the new dispensation of love, we are able to love our enemies, pray for them that despitefully use us. But today, we have changed the word of God from blessing to cursing. Holy Ghost fire to purify me, purify you, cleanse you, cleanse me. Because the Bible says, like refiner's fire, so shall he purify the sons of the kingdom. He's talking about spiritual cleansing. He's talking about purging of our sins and shortcomings and iniquities. To make us comfort like gold, symbolic of somebody who is now living a pure and holy life, matured life, God's kind of life, Christ likeness. That is one of the purposes of the Christian life, to become Christ like. So we should go back to the Bible. Go back to the Bible. We are so much carried away by sentiments and emotions. Once a, the head of the church, once a, a pastor or bishop or Jew says something, we just take it, we swallow it. Weak and sinker. We don't care whether it is scriptural. And that's a play, that's an area we must learn from. 
we must learn from. The burial Christians, they heard the word of God and they did not take it for granted. They heard from Apostle Paul. They searched the scripture to see if those things were so. How many of us have said the scripture and found what are Jews, what are our pastors and bishops and apostles are telling us whether it's according to the scripture? And if we discover it's against the scripture, what do we do? If somebody points out those errors, then we get mad. We quote a scripture from the Old Testament. Pass not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. You are anointed of God yourself. You yourself, you don't have to be a Jew. You don't have to be an apostle. If you are a child of God, you are a priest unto God in the New Testament dispensation. You are anointed of God. You are protected of God. But that does not mean that we should go into error deliberately because of our leaders. So there must be a balance. Respect our leaders. You know, honor them. And politely correct them where they are wrong because they are not God. They can make mistakes. Otherwise, everybody will go into error. Your leader goes in error and you follow in error. And both will end in hell. And that's not God's plan. When Jesus Christ was ministry, he condemned evil. He loved sinners. But he hated their sins. He rebuked the Pharisees for their hypocrisy. Today, if we do that, oh, we are speaking against authorities. But Jesus, he challenged the money changers in the house of God. So you have made the house of God a house of thieves. Where it's supposed to be a house of prayer. So we should learn from Jesus. We can't be holier than Jesus. In the name of love, 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 love. We, 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 we swallow all kinds of teachings, all kinds of wrong doctrines today. Every one of us will give account of himself or herself to God. This is one thing you must know. My pastor will not be there to intercede for me as an advocate. No brother there that day. No sister there that day. But we must all stand before the judgment seat of Christ for rewards. So this one should be a solemn message to our brothers and sisters to go to the word of God. Word of God is not a formality. It is instruction in righteousness. It is for teaching. It's for doctrine. It's for correction. When we are going wrong, otherwise we just continue. We just going to say, oh, that is tradition. This is how I met it. This is how I met it. This is what they have been doing. But is it in line with the word of God? Is he in line with the message of the hour? The message of the hour, talk about uh, the New Testament. Missing Old Testament with New Testament and not be able to decipher what we ought to believe now is a big problem. Matthew chapter 5, chapter 6 addresses some of those issues. The, some issues in the Old Testament that Jesus Christ addressed and his teaching. His instruction under the new covenant. These are very important things to take note of. For example, you say in the Old Testament, you have heard that if somebody, if somebody offends you, you should offend the person back. He for that. But he changed it. He changed it drastically. Love your enemies. Pray for them that despitefully use you. It was just change, complete change. And the apostles, they upheld that teaching in Romans chapter 12. He said, pray for them that despitefully you. Don't repay evil with evil. In Christendom today, we do repay evil for evil. Somebody dared not speak against us. Somebody dare not hurt us. We want to revenge. Whereas you could find many scriptures in the Old Testament to portray that viewpoint, but in the New Testament, it is very contrary. 
The new law of love, not only to love those who love you, even those who hate you, love them. Pray for them. Pray for their salvation. It's not God's will that any man should perish. So I think uh, I have emphasized that point enough, and I pray that God will really let us learn from that uh, short exhortation, so to say. Amen. It says, Shall baptize with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Let the fire of God purge me. Let the fire of God cleanse me. It is through cleansing that purification comes. Gold in its natural form is dirty because it's mixed up with other metals, the core alloys, and the earth. And so the gold we find in natural form is not lovable. But when it's treated in fire, you find the impurities, the alloys begin to melt away, melt away, melt away, remaining only the gold. So at the end, the gold becomes so beautiful and shining. There was a Somebody who saw a silver smith, a silver smith, people who, who, who work in furnace, where all these minerals, all this uh, gold and silver, they are refined. And then the person was anxious to ask the question, you are heating this metal so much, this gold, this silver, so much. At what point are you going to stop you keep hitting, 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 hitting. What tells you that, oh, it's not done? The silver smith said, until we hit it, hit it, hit it, until we see our own image reflected in the matter. Until I see my own reflection in that thing. Say, oh, it's not yet pure. But when we begin to see it, See my image right there, right there, right there. The year is done. That's a lesson for us to know. The work of purification and classic continues until Christ be formed in me, until Christ be formed in you. And that means we become matured and Christ like. Iniquity will not be in us, evil language will not be found in us. Speaking God. Hatred, bitterness, all sorts of things. These are the things to be cleansed away from our life until we become a reflection of Christ Jesus. That is a cardinal reason God is washing the church through the word of God. It's purifying the body of Christ through the word of God. So let's not take the word of God for granted. The word of God is for establishment, is to instruct you in doctrine, to correct you when you are wrong, to give you instruction on how to live right. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. With this, I welcome my Mamosa, Brother Todd. Welcome on board. God bless you. So that was just a clarification of that statement I made last time about what John the Baptist said about the baptism. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. So I hope that I've made that to some people who have heard us and those who will yet listen to us. God bless you. Amen. As we go, as we continue in today's study, I want us to pray, short prayer. Heavenly Father, we love you, we magnify you, and we thank you, Lord, for what you are doing through this program, through this Bible study, and thank for our brothers and sisters who are online and those who yet join us. We ask, you, Lord, you teach us again today. Speak a word unto our heart that will transform and change us for the better in the name of Jesus. We ask, you, Lord, that the spirit of understanding and revelation we come to us and give us grace to be obedient to your word. For it is not the hearers that are justified, but the doers of the word that are blessed. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Amen. Last time we were talking about the test, how Abraham was tested and how he passed the various tests, not just one, not one test, not two. So let's continue with the test. The farming tests, we start at that, the farming test. When Abraham arrived in the promised land that God had told him during farming, instead of staying there, he panicked and went to Egypt. So he failed the test. So it's not as if Abraham is just 100% everything. And this one should encourage you, you a child of God. The very fact that you have made a mistake in the time past, should not tie you down. Say, oh, I made a mistake. I sinned. What about that? David sinned and he repented. God accepted him. And today we can say, a, a, a David, the friend of God. And then uh, I remember we also went into the life of the apostles. How many of them failed the Lord? In fact, so much to learn from that aspect. Because Jesus Christ is so patient, so patient. That's how we should be patient with our members' flock also. Because some of them, they are not at the same level of understanding and maturity like us. So when we preach the gospel, some people are very slow to respond, to change. Through prayer and continuing instruction, they might change by and by. So let us be patient. Jesus Christ was very, very patient, ultra patient with disciples because they failed him many times. Was it the hour of watching until prayer? They failed him. Maybe if, if it were you and I, we'd just write them off. Write them off and choose other people. No. Peter, before Jesus ever spoke about his passion, said, no, 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 Lord. God forbid you, you die for us. Oh, no, 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 no. Jesus Christ rebuked the evil spirit, the devil. Get behind me, Satan. He loved Peter all the same. But he knew that it was Satan speaking through him at that time. Rebuked the devil. Say, so do not know the counsel of God. Do not know the will of God. Peter said, oh, look, oh. Even if it comes to that, when they are arresting you, I know that I'll be there, I'll be there. In fact, I will always be with you. He boosted. But what happened? He failed woefully. I'm just giving you an example of the failure of some of the, the apostles. Thomas Didymus, oh, unless I see the nail print on his hand, I will not believe. Did Jesus Christ write him off? Your writing more completely. Say, no. You are children of the devil. The nun. Patience. He continues to instruct them. His only, his brothers and sisters in the flesh. Because Mary had other children. Beside Jesus. Those ones, they did not believe the message of Jesus. They commonized the message of Jesus. The prophet not recognize his own country. But he was patient with them as well. By and by, after the resurrection, they believed. They believed. And they became foremost apostles like Jude, James, preaching the word of God. But all the white Jesus Christ was ministry was patient with them. He did not write them off. We should not write people off easily. A brother has fallen. A star has fallen. Encourage that brother to rise up. To fall does not mean that's your end. Rise up and walk again. And learn from your mistakes. And become stronger in the Lord. That's the message of encouragement to fellow brothers and sisters and church leaders. Let's learn to be patient with our followership. Teach them the word of God. Uncompromised word of God. Pray for them. And see them transform. From glory to glory. It may not be at the pace you think, but God is doing something. God is doing something. Changing your people, changing me, changing you. It's a gradual process. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
the nest test, the flock test. Abraham sorry, offered the best pasture to his sorry, nephew. Sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. Yeah. Can I say something on that support for the fallen brethren? Yes. The preacher said it is only the church that kills a fallen soldier. In the physical, when the soldiers are in war front, when somebody falls, and they pick the person up. But in the in Christianity, in the body of Christ, mostly, when somebody falls, that person becomes an object of ridicule. They begin to talk, brethren begin to talk, oh, did you not hear what that brother did? He stole, he took bribe, he beat his wife, he stole, he did. You begin to talk about the person, the person becomes ashamed and begins to run from the church. It should not be so. Let us learn to tolerate the weak among us, pray for them, and encourage them to stand. Amen. There was a story of a, a brother, he went to the church and his phone rang while service was going on. Every eye turned at him and demean him. At the end of, as they were going home, his wife rebuked him, look at you. You couldn't put your phone on silent. Pastor had talked to him. So this brother was very, very confused and frustrated. He went to the uh, club and he sat to take a bottle of or a glass of wine or alcohol, as it were. And as they served him, the, he spilled it on the floor. And he was so oh, sorry, sorry. Are you okay? And the people showed him love. The waiter helped to clean it. The other guys who were drinking, don't worry, I'll, I'll replace it for you, I'll pay for you. And he said, ah, I made a mistake of spilling my drink. Other people bore with me. They are ready to pay for me. They are ready to clean me up. But my phone rang in the church and everybody criticized and hurt me. And that was how that brother, as it were, got into the world. And the Lord help us in Jesus' name. The Bible says temptations will come, but woe unto him through whom it comes. It's better for a mice to be tied around his neck and be dumped into the river. So please don't be a source of temptation to another person. While we are not encouraging sin, we are saying that an every brother should be corrected in love, and every sister should be corrected in love. Pick him off from where he fell. Say rebuke, correct, rebuke, exhort. While you are rebuking, you should correct and you should exhort by telling him or her what to do and how to do it. Otherwise, the devil can capitalize on any opportunity. Like I say, he's older, he's wiser, he's smarter. He wants he affects your emotion. They don't love you in that church. See, you came late today. Nobody, you didn't even come to church today. Nobody cared. Nobody called you. The devil is wicked. He can blackmail. My pastor didn't even care why did he didn't come to church. I'm not going there again. He doesn't, they don't love you. If you are not, if you were important, they would have called you. No. No. Don't allow the enemy to drive you away from the presence of God. Like I said at the beginning, Adam, instead of confessing, he started defending. Select blaming other people. Please let us be careful. One, not to lead others to sin, not to drive others to the, away from the church, and not to constitute nuisance and be a, a, a problem, constitute a problem in the body of Christ. May the Lord help us to stand well in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. What you said is very important, but you see, because in Bible study, wants to balance it because on the other hand we may find that God can use circumstances to chasten us 
In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 5, And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children, my son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son who receiveth. Imagine your son, scourging your son, rebuking your son, and you say you love your son. Of course you love your son. But your son may not see that love then. If you endure the chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? And say this one to bring a balance because we can, in the name of love, cover and multitude of sin, allow sin to just continue in the camp. Otherwise, where is church discipline? Why must church discipline some people when they are recalcitrant? There must be this balance. Not long ago, a member of our congregation came out and told us openly how God humbled him. He, was, he, he knew, he recognized he was very proud, proud, self-conceited, very brilliant, occupying big position, and even in the church, he made for himself a seat. Let's learn from this so he got just to bring some kind of balance there. He said, this is my seat. He didn't announce it, but every time, that's his seat, that's his seat, that's his seat, that's his seat. But one day, he came late, and somebody dared to sit on his own seat in the church. Hi! He did not hide it to don't you know who I am in this church? Why? This is my seat. Why are you sitting on my seat? At that time, everybody started to rebuke this brother. Why do you think you must have that seat? This is the house of God. You came late and you are sitting. If ever you have a seat like that, then when we newcomer sit and all that. So, People were just now, it's like an open rebuke from pastors, from members of the church. He said, that day was when God humbled him. He was so cocky and proud. But that day his wings were caught. Today he's having God fervently. Amen. But he said he has learned never to go back to that realm again. Pride, pride of life. Pride of position because of money. I'm affluent. Don't you know who I am? That very day, many years ago now, he said it on his own. It was like a testimony how God humbled him. So, this is different from somebody who, because uh, somebody else could have said, ah, but today I will come to this church again. Though. See, I was just speaking, you know, condemning my action, this, that, that. So there must be a balance. We love them. We are patient with them. We pray for them. But let them not continue in their evil. That's right. Okay, That's another right. example. A lady, a sister, was not happy with a fellow sister in the church. And so there were enemies, unquote, but they are Christians going to the church. One day, again, due to her own lateness, she was late. She was late and accidentally, unquote, she sat close to her enemy. That fellow sister that she doesn't love. He, it was like great embarrassment. She felt very uneasy. How can I say close to this sister? The pastor noticed it right from the movie and said, Sister, so so and so, 
Today is today. We must know who you are. If you are a Christian, be a Christian. If you are not a believer, let's show it for today. How come you and that sister, you are at log ahead and you claim you love God? When the pastor makes that kind of remark, spirit of conviction just came upon both of them. Both of them. And this one said to say, my sister, I'm very, very sorry. The other one said, no, 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 no. I am the one. I'm the one. The fault is mine. I'm very, very sorry. 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 That's how they made up. They, they, they reconciled, forgave one another. And instantly, two miracles happened. One of them had been prayed for the baptism of the Holy Ghost who speak in tongues. Went to my men of God, pray for me, pray for me. Nothing happened, nothing happened, nothing happened, nothing happened. But that day, as they, she apologized and repented and offered forgiveness, she received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Pastor did not come there and lay hands upon her. You can see they were hindrance in preventing her from receiving the Holy Ghost. Bitterness, and hatred and whatever. Now that one has been cleared, Holy Ghost came without anybody lay hands upon her. But the other one had a problem, goiter, swollen neck, for which she too had been asking for healing, asking God for healing, healing, healing. Anywhere there's miracle service, I will go, go there, pray for me, pray for me. Nothing, nothing happened. But instantly, that moment, the goiter vanished. Now when she received a miracle, miraculous healing, that instant that they reconcile, it was just between both of them now. No pastor was there to pray for them, any of them. And I, that one should teach us many things about hindrance to prayer, how bitterness, hatred, envy, and all those things can make our prayer not to be answered. But that they receive their healing and forgiveness and cleansing. Amen. Sometimes open rebuke is better than secret law. May the Lord help us in all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. May we not run from one congregation to another and say, oh, yeah, pastor offended me. That sister offended me. They put me to shame in that church, so I'm not going again. No. You leave one church. It's like leaving one congregation to another. The church of God is one, made up of born-again Christians worldwide. It's not a building. So if you leave one congregation, go to another thing that, oh, I'm running away from a pastor, I'm running away from fellow brother and sister. Are you, are you really serious? Can we hide from God? The same God who we serve there is the same God we are going to serve there. So we can't be flipping churches, running from one church to the other because somebody has offended us. It doesn't work. If we really love the Lord, let us accept rebuke, let us accept correction, Whenever it comes, and let us learn from it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Any contribution, any question before we continue? Hi, I'd like to just uh, say something. Uh, it's just what you were saying about the, 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 the hatred and the jealousy and the animosity uh, between the two sisters. And uh, and and end up uh, you know very uh, helpful, and they uh, both received uh, you know a blessing uh, because of it. But it's such a rampant thing in the church. Like it's just like it's. So I think we should just pray for uh, your breakthrough in uh, in and not having that because it ends up to it starts to like to become uh, like church splits because of it. Like there's been a lot of uh, problems, you know, like and uh, you know, it has broken. You know, people have uh, fallen away uh, from, from Christ because of that, and so I think we should just just pray, you know, and make it an active uh, part of our prayer life for, uh, for for peace in the church. Amen. 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 Thank you, brother. God bless you. If we are at the end, we remember to pray for such people in such condition. Mm -hmm. If we can jot it down, we pray for fellow brothers and sisters who have such attitude. 
You know, the price is coming soon. You must make all wrongs right. You know, and drop our pride, humble ourselves in the presence of God, and He will lift us up. God resist the proud, but give grace to the humble. Thank you so much. You are talking about Abraham. The flock test. Abraham offered the best pasture to his nephew, Lot. God honored his decision. So he passed. You see, one test, he failed. But this time around, he passed the test. That's how we also have victory. There are sometimes, you know, we have wins. Uh -huh. So we all have strengths, we all have weaknesses. We should not continue our witnesses ask for strength to overcome. Because eventually, Abraham finished well and strong, despite all this up and down. So we too may have up and downs today. That's not the end of life. Be encouraged, my brother. Be encouraged, my sister. Get over it. And you become finer than gold. God bless you. Now, where is that story? Because the Bible study... Where is that story in the Bible? The story of Lot and Abraham. Where Abraham told Lot to choose, to choose a place of pasture for his flock because there was strife between Abraham, Abraham's herdsmen, and Lot's herdsmen. And Abraham said, ah, no, 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 no. We can't afford to have this kind of strife. This kind of uh, division among us. No, you are my nephew, my brother's son. No, 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 no. I would rather give you the opportunity to choose a place where you can just go and take care of your flock. I'll give you the, the, the first priority. You choose. Abraham did not insist, oh, I'm the eldest. I choose this place, then you choose that place. Or you go to that place, this is my home, this is my abode. No. In humility, Abraham said, just choose. Because there's no need for us to strive. Who knows where that passage is in the Bible? We're going to read it, because it's a Bible study. Genesis 13, verse 8. Okay, let's check it out. Genesis chapter 13, verse 8. And Abraham said unto Lot, Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my herdsmen and the herdsmen, for we be brethren. Is not the whole land before thee separate thyself, I pray thee, from me? If thou wilt take the left hand, then I will go to the right. Or if thou depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. And Lord lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere before the Lord distressed Sodom and Gomorrah, even at the garden of the Lord like the land of Egypt, as thou come to Zor. Then Lord chose him all the plain of Jordan, and Lord journeyed east, and they separated themselves one from the other. Thank you, my brother, Ipomusa, for giving you that scripture. Yes. What, what can we learn from that, from that passage? What can we learn? What are lessons to learn from there? Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, one, one, uh, one big lesson is uh, total dependence on God. The Bible says that uh, we live by faith and not by sight. So when you depend on God, even when it seems to be there's no way, the Holy Spirit will tell you there's way. And people will tell you, no, there's no way. You will tell them, don't worry. It is possible. And when you do it, it's possible. So, Amen. yeah. So we, we, the summary is we need to depend on the Holy Spirit. You know, because uh, the Bible says that 
just how the heaven is far from the earth, so the ways of God is to us. So the ways of God does not make sense to mankind. And if you don't have the understanding or the guidance of the Holy Spirit, you will just be struggling because you'll be depending on your skill set. You know, but the truth is that God ways it, it varies. It's, it's very different. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. So Abraham has invited those qualities, depending on God. That's why the father of faith we we'll see that exhibited here. So I allow this my son to choose first. The other one may look uh, like desert, nothing really there. But I put my trust in God for the sake of peace. When you do God's way, when you obey God, God will make sure all things will work in your favor. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. He has good intention for us. The thoughts he has for all, they are good thoughts, never of evil. All we need to do is just believe him, obey him, trust him, depend upon him. That's all. God bless you. Yeah, my sister. Yeah, I just wanted to add that <clears throat> Abraham was selfless. Wow. He, 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 he was not thinking of himself first, mm -hmm. like most people we do. They would rather take look and uh, you know it's just physical looking you just look you think that's that's why they say uh, people nobody believes you always believe that the grass is greener on the other side mm -hmm. so he was he, he didn't just want to look physically because of his trust in the lord he just gave him the nephew opportunity to to choose and that, because of the trust he knows that wherever he will go the lord will go with him the Lord Amen. bless it. And that is what he did. And that was what happened in their lives. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you so much for that contribution. That's true. Any more contribution? What are we to learn from that story? Abraham, he passed the test in this very case. What lessons are we going to learn from there? We have talked about depending on the Holy Spirit, selflessness, what else can we learn from there? Uh, he had uh, love for uh, for other people. He had love for his uh, nep uh, his brother's uh, son, and uh, he showed lots of love with uh, just say you you choose, you know. Yes. And uh, that's about that's all I have to say, really. Yes, thank you. He showed love, love. You see, this love we talk is practical. Yeah. And love is sacrificial. Abraham simplified it yeah. and said, choose my son. And it was very obvious that those areas were actually very green, very good for cattle, much better than the other dry place that Abraham chose eventually. But by faith, he was doing all this by faith. And that's why today, says his father of faith. And God vindicated him. Unfortunately for Lord, that place that looks so lucrative was where sin dwelt, Sodom and Gomorrah. And if not that Abraham again showed love, he would have perished with those people. Lot was rescued by Abraham later when there was a problem. And when God wanted to judge the Sodomites, People of Sodom and Gomorrah, God also loved him and sent angel to deliver Lot and his wife. Unfortunately, Lot's wife looked back and she perished, became a pillar of salt. Otherwise, there was deliverance for her. God's love. Thank you so much for all those contributions. He loved his nephew. Love is displayed there. Any more before we continue? Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, something just Hallelujah. crossed my mind. So uh he, he displayed our leadership. So if we if we fast forward, 
you know, the book, you know, New Testament. So when uh, the apostles were, you know, they were trying to want to be the head. And, you know, Jesus explained the role of a real leader. So a leader, you know, will put others first before himself. So when you serve mm -hmm. others before God, you are actually a leader. So if you see what he did, by the explanation, the explanation of Jesus Christ, so he let his brother choose. So in the sight of God, he was a genuine leader. That's awesome. Yeah, Thank that's you so good. much. Thank you so much. And who has got the scripture for that? Remember this Bible study? Mm, we are learning. There's one scripture in Philippians that tells us that, you know, regarding others above yourself, don't even esteem yourself above others. Let, let it be the opposite. Esteeming others better than yourself. Who can give me a scripture? There's a particular place in Philippians chapter 2. I want to check it. But if you have other scriptures in Romans or so, you can also let us know. Aha, uh -huh, got it. Philippians chapter 2, verse 3. Philippians 2, verse 3 says, Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem order better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but let every man also look on the things of others. Let this might be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in form of God, taught it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of his servant. I was made in likeness of man. Mm -hmm. That's very deep if we want to go into that. How the ministry of redemption. God Almighty who is his spirit cannot die. But he had to come. He had to come. He had to send his only son to die. Son had to be sinless. And now in coming to the world, he did not choose the best place, the best palace to come from. Oh. He chose very humble people. Yes. Oh. A place to be born in, a place to dwell in, and he was numbered among the poor, so to say. He became poor for our sake, so that through his poverty, we become rich. Praise the Lord. He humbled himself. See, God Almighty, he cannot die, you cannot kill him, but he had to come and save us. Now he came as a human. I chose to be born of Mary, of humble beginning, humble parentage. And then there was no place even for him in the hotels or hospital, wherever, you know, where he could be born. No, in a manger where they took care of animals. It was not by mistake. This is God in humility. God humbling himself. He has done all the, he wore the feet of disciples. All this to show us humility. And Abraham exhibited it here. In fact, if we, if we want to continue on that, we might just dwell on that for the whole of that. But it was just to buttress a point. How that Abraham had testings. Some he failed, some he passed. In this case, he passed very well. May we pass every test that come our way in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. This, this test of Abraham and Lot is very, very, very significant, and we should draw lessons from it. See, the Bible says that these things are written for our examples. They are written for it. Because we are going to encounter things like this, maybe in an office, who chooses first. Mm -hmm. Maybe in the family, mm -hmm. chooses first. And the first son, the inheritance is mine by our culture. Mm -hmm. 
you are a woman, you don't have no inheritance in this place. Are we prepared to let go? Let Particularly, go. maybe, maybe you, you may be better off, maybe might be the, the senior, it might be the junior, and uh, you are not, you, you really need help. But your senior brother or your elder one feel that it's my right. I'm going to take everything. And maybe you are the senior, you have it all, you have enough for yourself, you are comfortable. But you still want to struggle with family properties. <laughs> That's my <not> right. <laughs> but Abraham didn't do that. Thank you, Jesus. He said, uh, like we said, he was selfless, he was selfless. He depended on God to help him. We will say this is an opportunity. By the way, we it's even Lord to start struggling with Abraham. I brought you from the village. <laughs> I can send you back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Abraham said, we are brothers. And please, let's remember, if husband and wife will remember this, some husbands and wives, so, so husbands and wives, they're even in competition. You are my wife. You are my husband. What is yours is mine. What is mine is yours. We are brethren. Let's not Thank fight you. over these things. Thank you, Jesus. You offended me, okay. And sometimes we say, okay, if I... Can I just lose my position like that in the family? Can I just lose my... Now let's get back to the church. We laid the foundation of this church. Because in my presence, this church was started. And why is it now that I, I cannot even benefit from the church? Mm -hmm. These things are written for our examples. Pray that the Holy Spirit will help us to take the right decision. And look at how when Lot was in trouble, Abraham went to rescue him. He gathered his army mm. to fight for my brother. Can we fight for our brothers like that? Those mm. that have offended us. Wow. And we are New Testament Christians. We are New Testament Christians. Can we fight our brothers like that? Somebody, your, your, they, they, I had two uncles while we were growing up who did not live well. They were always struggling and quarreling over family land. One day, one of them went somewhere and his grandson was sick had conversion. The other one had the medicine to save the grandson of his enemy. In spite of the fact that they were not good people, they were quarreling, this old man went into his house, brought out the medicine, and saved the grandson of his brother with whom they had no love. They were always quarreling over inheritance. And when the other man returned from the farm, wherever he was saying, he was told the story that ah, if not for this man, this our my son would have died, this grandson would have died, though. That was how they initiated reconciliation. Love correct a multitude of sin. Promotes mm -hmm. reconciliation. The hatred. The Bible said that vengeance belongs to God. Mm -hmm. So let God fight for you rather than trying to fight for yourself. Abraham had the right to say whatever and take the best part. Yeah. He allowed God to fight for him. Did God not fight for him? Sure. Fought for him. Did God not prosper him? He prospered him. So it is not that inheritance of yours that will change your status. Or if, if I'm able to grab five plots of land, which my dead father, my late father left, I'll become richer. Do you know if an earthquake will happen tomorrow 
and that lamp with which you want to kill your brother will be destroyed. Do you know what will happen? So I, I, I thank God for these studies that God is helping us to see beyond the, the surface, to look at eternity. I don't know if I would have been able to do like Abraham, but Abraham set example for me mm -hmm. to say, don't insist on your right. Don't insist on your right. It's my right to this. It's my right to that. Count others better than yourself. Like my wife said, Abraham was selfless. In this situation, I beg you, ignore. And like we saw, but apart from that sharing, that he even went further to fight for him when he was in trouble, it's just blowing my mind. He went to he risk. He could have died in the war front. Mm -hmm. He could have died. But because he trusted in God, God helped him and has set examples for us. And the Bible says that if we love those who love us, we are not better than the unbelievers. And don't we want to be better than the unbelievers? Don't we want to be better than the Pharisees and Sadducees? And the preacher said, the Pharisees, the Pharisees and Sadducees, they fast three times a week, they give alms, they pray, yet their righteousness was not counted as good because of lack of love because of lack of humility. Lack of humility. Oh, I fast three times a week. I give alms. I pay my tithes. That was not what God was looking for. He was looking for fasting with humility, praying with humility, giving your tithes with humility, supporting the weak with humility, counting others better than yourself, rather than giving it to be noticed or I, it is the culture I must give it and the Bible says these things are written for our examples let those that have ears hear what the spirit says to the church amen thank you thank you for bringing it down to it you know, like that example you gave of uh, people struggling over property I've also heard Two brothers strive over property and one killing the other outright so that you have the possession. Oh. Sorry, the, 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 sorry, before you continue, there was this gist that we had. A, a man died and left a story building for his two sons. See, mm -hmm. Senior one has the ground floor. And the junior, the, the and the up the senior, the junior one had the upper floor, so the junior one came and renovated his upper floor to suit him. And the senior one said, "I want to destroy this building and rebuild it, just to humiliate his junior, junior brother." Uh, you you painted okay, paint it. I want to pull it down and reconstruct it. That is my form of innovation. We should not do anything to hurt another person. It's better you are hurt than another person is hurt. And then God will have opportunity to fight for you. It's mm. not easy, it's difficult, but it's the way to salvation. It's the way to heaven. Amen. Yes, and I've heard several stories too. Over land. It's not even houses, not just land, land, uncultivated land. Striving. This land is my own. This land is my own. Strive, 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 strive. And in several cases, people kill themselves so that they just get a piece of land. I know how we struggle when we come here. We bought land. People took over our land and all that. One thing, okay, legal case. Even when you come to court, it's bribery and corruption. So even you, that, that's right. If you are not careful, you may be arrested. Just we suffer. We lost several lands like that in Nigeria. 
But we didn't have to arrest anybody. We didn't have to make any enemy out of them. My father, by right, ought to have given me some land. But alas, when he died, I got nothing, absolutely nothing. I did not go and pick up quarter with my other brothers. Why only you just grab all the land? No. Just, let's just put our trust in law. We are Christians. Jesus, our Lord and Savior and Master, our provider. Follow his principles and he will fight for you without failing. Just depend on him. Obey him moment by moment and the best will be yours. Praise the Lord. Amen. I can raise his hand. Okay, okay, yes. Let's dwell on that. We may not even go further because we are learning something. God will teach you some things tonight. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, I have a couple of examples, but because of uh, time or uh, uh, factor, I'm just going to say one. I'll make it uh, uh, very brief. Uh, so I, I had uh, I had a court dispute with someone in Nigeria. So it was in a uh, COVID, you know. So I, I did the math, you know. It was going to cost me lots to travel. So I, I said to myself, instead of me, you know, for example, paying like uh, seven million to travel, you know, if I if I you know played with the person, maybe like two million. And we resolved the matter amicably since it was mutual. You know, I, I still have saved five million for myself. So that was my chain of thought. You know, so I reached out to the person, the person declined. And the person's response was that, oh, I know I'm going to lose. And not because I just want to set the record straight, not because I was perfect, but, you know, at that time, that was when I. It was that period I got, you know, like real born again, you know, like give my life to God. And I, I apologized. I pleaded. I, the way, like I went, I strive, the Bible says strive for peace. I actually strive for peace. And this person really hurts me, you know, before I give my life to God, before, you know, I was very bitter when I thought about what this person did to me, but when I got born again, you know, somehow the Holy Spirit just came in, you know, I was, I tried, I, you know, I haven't reached out to people to help me apologize. The other brother, nothing worked. The person was so proud and were very confident. And, you know, they also influential are back home. So they thought they were going to win, you know? So though it took a while and I was very prayerful. So this year, I think, I think last month, the final judgment came out. The person got nothing. It's I, I was so shocked. The, the like nothing came out. Nothing, you know, nothing. Not a penny. The person was asking for millions, millions. The not a penny. The judge and you know, thankfully to God, what you know <laughs> amazes me was that. The judge is is also a woman, so there's no way you know the, the, someone would say, "Oh, because the judge was a man, so it was there was there was a form of bias," you know. So just to you know, uh, uh, just you know, to confirm or to say that you know we should depend on the Holy Spirit, you know, do things in our condense. Uh, in accordance with the Bible, you know. So there's a there's a statement Pastor Innocent always said that I like so much. He said, "Obey God and leave the consequences for God. You have no shame. You do God's own." If at the end of the day, the, the one of my role models in the Bible, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they said, "Even if God will not deliver us, you know, even if God will not deliver us, we still will not bad." And so. You know, let's do God's work. And at the end of the day, for any reasons, God said he did not give us victory. It's, he knows better. You know, but let's depend on God. Do things the way the Bible instructs us. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Obey God and lay the consequences to him. 
Awesome. These are wonderful lessons today. Yeah, I think even time is up, but yes, in case the time is up. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, everybody. Note where we stopped. There's no rush. We are going to continue from there next week. But just what I can say, say even if God does not give us victory, what we are seeing as victory, what we are seeing as victory in our eyes may not be victory in its essence. God's plan for us is always better. Amen. I remember the scripture we read from um, Hebrews chapter 12, I think, that said God disciplines us. That victory, as, as it were, that was deprived could have been a way of disciplining us and preparing us for a better future. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Remember, we pray for people that are facing, are having enmity in the church. Uh, they, 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 because of the pastor offended you or somebody offended you, pastor's wife, whatever you now decide to leave the church, that God should touch their hearts. So that mm -hmm. they know that the church is the body of Christ, is the house of God. It's not for anybody. So that they will learn to forgive and they will learn to leave matters for God. Apart, apart from praying for those people, we're also going to pray for any person that has oppressed us, that has offended us, that God will help us to be like Abraham, who said, we are brethren, I leave matter for you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, O oh God. Father, but brothers and sisters, so God, who have been offended yeah, by pastors, the offended by pastors' today, wives, division, offended by brothers and fellow sisters in the church, offended by choir master, offended by group leader, offended, oh Lord, 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 by colleagues, oh group Father, members, oh Lord, Lord, even in the secular realm, colleague of you, my Lord, I'm going to help us in God. Throughout the mass of Christ, you help us, O Lord, Lord, to see you yeah, with one Lord another. Yes, help us, O Christ, to, Lord, Lord, to take God's own, own way, to go God's own, own way. Help us, my Lord, Lord and my God, help me, help me as an individual. Not to Lord, where I have offense, where people have offended me, that will let to discharge them. Oh, for our oh Lord, I look at the bigger picture. The name of Jesus. Oh, that we are members of the body of Christ. To be Lord Jesus, to have sincere love, help one to towards another, oh God. Thanks for teaching us today, oh God, to concerning, oh Lord. Not insisting on our own way. Because Not harboring, oh Lord, bitterness and hatred and envy in our hearts. Oh Lord, to let go and let go. fight for Lord. In help our families, in our homes, in our, our marriages, oh God, help us only to apply these principles. All battles for you. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father Lord, because you are good. Because the glory is sustained. Let us pray for love of God. In the, in the Let world. love be shed abroad in our hearts. We take family circles, oh Lord. We take communities, oh Lord. Lord, oh Lord, Lord, help us. Lord, help me. Help Jesus me. Help me to learn from this principle. You. Help me to learn this lesson to go and put it to action in my, my life. Oh, glory, 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 glory. Help me to put my trust in you. Come yes, with me. Where there is trouble, oh Holy Spirit, you know the way. There is no this, this job may look rosy today, very rosy. God will help everyone. Lord, you know the end from the beginning. Help me to make right choices, not based on not based on worldly premises. Oh, but what is highly esteemed among men and abomination in the sight of God? Help me, O oh God, God, to love you. Help me to be obedient and submissive and humble. Help me to learn when you correct me, O Lord, not to take, O Lord, for vengeance, O God. Do something in the name of Jesus Christ. In oh, thank you, Lord. I my heart. Thank you, my living God.
to have a friend there for that they have the mind of Christ, oh God. Amen. You will not think of running from one congregation to another. Yes, God, Father. the church of God is one. Amen. Help yes, to Lord. have this revelation and understanding. Lord, in Jesus name. Church, Lord. Lord, we pray for so many people that are facing challenges in their businesses, in their families, those that are facing challenges in their places of work. We pray for them, oh God, for your intervention. Those that are looking for finances, mm -hmm. Lord, provide for them. Those are looking for uh, uh, for jobs, provide for them. Those, oh God, that are pregnant, help them to guide their pregnancies to them and deliver safely. Father, those that are sick, heal them. Those yeah. that are in trouble, Lord, comfort them through the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank Amen. you for wow. election that has been concluded in the U.S. We pray God for wisdom for the new for the president elect. We pray God that you will you will restore the country in the name of Jesus Christ. We Amen. pray for other countries of the world where there is no peace. We ask, oh God, pray for wisdom for the leaders that they will seek peace and seek the need of the poor and see how to restore the poor, the economy Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, we Amen. pray for various congregations. Father, oh God, that everyone will see that he is a part and parcel of the body of Christ, that they will not see the church as that of the pastor or the founder, but they will see the church as your work. Everybody will contribute physically, spiritually, financially to the growth of the church in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you Amen. for those programs that are lined up, particularly our mission work in Nigeria. We ask, oh God, for the leading of the Holy Spirit, we ask for strength, we ask for wisdom, we ask for anointing, we ask for financial provisions in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, Amen. Lord, we pray that you prepare us and make us ready for your second coming, that we will finish well and finish strong yes, in the God. name of Jesus Christ. Thank Amen. You for answering our prayers, because we pray and believe in Jesus' name, and everyone shall say, Amen. Amen. Only lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. Evil. Forgive Amen. us. Forgive those that have sinned against us. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We share the grace in fellowship. May the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God. The, the love of God. And the sweet fellowship of the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit rest and abide with now, us now and forevermore. Amen. Shall Amen. God's goodness, God's goodness and, mercy and mercy shall follow us all the days, all all the days of our lives. We, we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much for your active participation in today's Bible studies. Please remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that once the messages come and uploaded to YouTube, you will receive it. And please, when you receive, don't keep it to yourself. Share it. One Amen. Thing, one benefit from it, you never know. Until we meet again, I pray the blessings of God upon you. Thank you Amen. so much and have a good night. God bless, God bless you. you. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye, you. <laughs>